Hello, this is Martin Gore from Depeche Mode. Hi, this is Dave Garn from Depeche Mode, and you are listening to My Nerd Road. And welcome to it. I'm your host, John Justice. Here to talk about the world we live in, life in general, and all things pertaining to the greatest band on the face of the planet, Depeche Mode. As always, if you want to email talkshownerd at gmail.com, and if you want to support my nerd world and Depeche Mode, the podcast, and you enjoy reading science fiction, I hope you'll take a moment and check out my science fiction uh, series, Embark, and available at Amazon.com. Search for John J-O-N Justice and Embark. I'll give you more details on that at the end of this week's uh, episode. So, again, things are quiet unless you happen to be following the band on its Memento Mori tour in terms of news this week. But I have done a little digging into some DM items this week and found an interesting little nugget that I wanted to share with you. And I want to ask a, a question. Hopefully we can spark some listener feedback this week. Talk show nerd at gmail.com. But before we get into that, if you're seeing the image for today's podcast, I found I found an interesting photo. It looks like it might be Photoshop, but I'm not 100% sure. When I was looking for potential news to discuss on the show this week, I ran across this image, and it's just taken from the Memento Mori tour. I used it for the podcast photo and uh, for uh, for the photo up on up on YouTube. So it's... During the show, it's got Dave in the in the in the very center, the forefront of the of the picture. Um, during a portion of the show where the stage is washed in red, Martin is off to his right, stage left. You can see Peter Gordino to Dave's um, uh, left, stage right, and there's this massive video camera in frame. Right below Dave, and he's leaning down, singing into the microphone. It looks like a concert photo. As a matter of fact, the picture itself I cropped. It was almost a, a square, as opposed to being more of the letterbox um, the photograph of what you would typically typically see. When I saw this picture, I mean, it looks like it was taken, and you would see it in hanging in a movie in a movie theater. It got me thinking about again the live physical release for the Memento Mori tour, but it also got me thinking of this idea of big screen Depeche Mode again. And while I haven't seen uh, Taylor Swift, the era's movie, my wife went to go and see it. I was just thinking how great it would be if we had an Anton Corbin shot or even another director shot big screen release of the Memento Mori tour. I just think that would be amazing. It probably wouldn't bring in the box office dollars enough to make up for the amount of money required to get a major film released into theaters. But that photo, especially with the camera sitting right there so prominent and echoing thoughts of 101 and that infamous shot of Dave, the black and white shot, of uh, him from the back on stage during the music for the masses show. And just what an iconic photo that is for us Depeche Mode fans. This picture showing the three of them. And really, I think a part of it that now that I'm talking about it out loud that really stuck out was Peter Gordino being in the frame and perhaps his replacing, at least in my mind, um, Fletch with him not being there. I don't know. The photo itself I just thought was was really unique and interesting. And I've seen a lot of, you know, of the live photos, um, especially because I try to choose one every week for the image to use for the for the podcast. And that one just really stuck out. So if you haven't seen it, go and uh, check it out on YouTube. My Nerd World, again, I used it for the screen grab this week. It's cropped, so you're not getting the full sort of image of what I used before. But but check it out. I'm looking forward to to seeing what the band has planned for later this year as we as I keep talking about. We keep waiting for the final releases for uh Memento uh Mori. 
This also brings up a question in my mind that I wanted to ask you about. There's a lot. I just, the image really brought out just a lot of thoughts in my head this week, and just just kind of happened that way. So here's your question this week: What's your daily DM song? Or do you have a daily Depeche Mode song? And if you do, what is it? Do you have a song? by Depeche Mode that you listen to every day. I always have. And it's not by design. This goes back to when I was a kid. When I was a real, like, grade school. Living in Arcadia, California. I remember going, and the first time I spent the night at a friend's house. And when we went to go to bed, he had turned on either the radio or... Uh, cassette tapers, or it was one or the other. And I remember Hollow Notes playing for some reason, probably because that's what he was playing. Um, but who knows if that's the case or is my memories, you know, nostalgia playing tricks on me or, or what. But I remember thinking to myself at the time as a kid, this is really odd. And my recollection of this being very young, I mean, I'm talking, I don't know, nine, ten years old maybe. I don't know how old is how old are you the first time you go and spend the night at a friend's house. But I remember, at least my, my, my memory of it is me asking him, and he, and he said, oh, I listen to music when I go to bed. And ever since then, I've listened to music when I go to sleep. Now, it was different before when we, you know, didn't have uh, the digital versions that we have now. But as I've gotten older, I've always listened to music before I go to bed. As a matter of fact, I used to burn CDs. I just had a few songs on them because I would make a, a playlist of three or four songs, and I still do that to this day. And there is always a Depeche Mode song that's attached to that going-to-bed playlist. And as I think back over the course of the past few years, Broken was certainly on that list of a song that I listen to every single day. Here is The House is usually on that on that list. I Want It All was, was a daily for me for a while going to bed. Cover Me was the... Daily DM song for me since the release of Spirit. Just because it had a really cool vibe. Now, and it was nice and mellow. Except for the fact that the latter half and the instrumental portion of that song typically would go and wake me up for a moment. And uh, then I would fall back asleep. Ghosts, again, is currently my daily DM song. I have listened to that song every single day day at least once if not more since I first got my hands on it before it was released so with that being said do you have a DM song daily that you listen to is it something that you do intentionally or is it something that just sort of happened like I said for me it's just because I listen to music every night before I go to sleep and even if I happen to be sleeping someplace else if I'm traveling that still is the case, even if I need to go and wear headphones. How about you? Looking for Depeche Mode news this week? There wasn't any to share apart from the tour continuing and the set list remaining the same. The inclusion of of um, Before We Drown has come back into the set list in some of these final dates of the Memento Mori tour. Still no return of World In My Eyes, which is really odd. I wonder why they decided to pitch that off. I wonder if the song wasn't getting the kind of reaction that the band wanted and Behind the Wheel is getting a better reaction. Very odd choice, in my opinion. And it's a conversation that I've had with um, my buddy uh, Matt before. We've kind of been scratching our heads as to why that was the uh, the case. Looking, though, for news items, I came across this article from Far Out Magazine. Far Out Magazine has actually had a couple of different articles this week. They have one um, going back to Dave's overdose. They have one about how people are people. Um, was not a favorite of the band or Martin Gore. This I had never heard before, and I wanted to share it with you. The Depeche Mode song that Martin Gore called Ultimate Arrogance. The album Songs of Faith and Devotion still resonates today, says the article. But there's a fascinating layer to its tracks when you peek behind the scenes. Dave Gaughan was grappling with drug addiction during this time, a reality which added to the gritty edge of the music. Additionally, internal tensions led to a band member eventually parting ways amid the chaos. 
Despite the chaos, Martin Gore's songwriting prowess remained intact, while Gon's vocals stayed on top form, even in the moments when they had a raw edge compared to their earlier work. The album itself became one of their most popular, the lyrics that explored the themes of spirituality and love. One track that addressed these topics was Judas, an unconventional love song about desire. Now, before I go further into this article, I want to share with you something funny. When um, Songs of Faith and Devotion first came out, I got an advanced cassette copy before its official release. And I can't remember how I even got that advanced cassette copy. It was a, I think it was a promo copy. And it was funny because the girl I was dating at the time used to be... I had a group of friends... Uh, I had a buddy of mine, Mike, a girl that I was dating, Christina. He had been dating her for a while, and then I started dating her, and Mike and I had a falling out. Mike and I are still friends to this day, and I don't talk to her anymore. That being said, they were both massive Depeche Mode fans, but for some reason, um, they both had a bit of a falling out with with the band uh, prior to the release of Songs of Faith and Devotion. I think my buddy uh, Mike had burned out while he was still a massive fan when Violator came out, he wasn't the biggest fan of that album. He liked their earlier stuff. And it was during that time when bands became more popular with the public that a lot of people got turned off and Christina had gotten turned off. And I remember the first time that I was playing the album for her and she heard Walking in My Shoes the fir- during the beginning of the song where he does the first try walking in my shoes, it plays out. And then you have that bam of the snare. She had made a sarcastic comment, burned into my brain of, I bet during the live show, Dave does a high kick when that happens. I was so annoyed. The point I wanted to make about Judas, though, was the first time I heard Judas, at the end, when you get that brief pause right at the end of the song before it kicks into that Alan Wilder-esque instrumental, I thought I was listening to a brand new song. Before you get into the boom, 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 right? The whole, if you want my love, and then it ends with that, and that kind of that crescendo, and then there's that pause. When the next bit of music popped in, I thought it was a brand new song. And then I got confused when it ended, and I went, was that an interlude? Oh, no, that was still part of Judas. All right, back to the article. In the lyrics, the narrator presents what appears to be an ultimatum to his partner, pushing them to make a choice. Man will survive the harshest conditions and stay alive through difficult decisions. So make up your mind for me. Walk the line for me if you want my love. Considering the band members' mindsets during this period, it's likely that Judas was an exercise in exploring the darker sides of love where sacrifice is necessary and the line between trust and betrayal runs thin. The repeated lyric if you want my love, indicates insecurity while prompting you as a listener to evaluate what it means to fully commit to someone. According to Gore, the song was about a bold choice, describing its themes to In Press. That's an outlet, In Press. He explained, Judas is an arrogant love song. We are not condoning unsafe sex. It's about wanting 100% of someone in a relationship, the ultimate arrogance. Judas was always a song that resonated with me, and it always resonated with me to exactly the extent of what Martin Gore said. I'd never heard him talk about this song specifically, and I'm actually surprised considering this is probably lifted from a time around the promotion of Songs of Faith and Devotion, as these uh, Far Out magazine articles have been pulling from past interviews. And Martin was always a bit reluctant to go and talk about um, anything beyond a song's ambiguity to leave it up to the listener to decide for themselves what the song means. Judas is a bit straightforward. And when he gives this description, and the writer does as well, I couldn't agree more. Um, the the We're not condoning un, uh, unsafe sex, and especially uh, the the line, risk your health for me, that was always what I took from it was that, you know, put yourself in danger with, with this relationship that you are taking with me, or it could have been related to drugs, something that I wasn't um, really a a part of, well, not ever really a part of um, that I didn't relate to, but certainly the, the other aspect of it was something that I could, 
definitely relate to. But this is a song that I always loved and got me through some difficult times prior to, uh, of course, meeting my uh, my wife. So uh, your thoughts? Always love to hear from you uh, with regard to this and inspirational for tackling individual songs down the line and pulling from them some nuggets uh, as they did here in this uh, article. Of course, it's always helpful when you actually have commentary from the band as well. And again, I'd never heard uh, Martin uh, talk about this song in in such a way before. It's always interesting insight to see these little nuggets that have been floating around out there for probably quite a long time that I had never heard before. <laughs> All right, let's get to your emails this week. Listener feedback, just got a couple. It's been slow the past few weeks, but that's okay. Life goes on. Pinnacle Mensch writes, Perfect flavor for what my palate was craving, loveliness, with regard to the podcast. Thank you very much. That was a very kind and eloquent uh, message. I greatly appreciate it. Tanya Ham writes, Great show as always, no matter how long or short they are. It's so cool that Phil, Phil Gone, is a listener to the pod. He seems like such a nice guy. I agree. I've wondered about the watches, too, after seeing the promos for for the Spirit and Memento Mori tours. I'm sure not many of us fans have that kind of money to spend on a watch, but then again, it would only take a few to add up, LOL. Take care. Always look forward to next week's show. Thank you, Tanya. Uh, thank you for writing in. I look forward to hearing from you between now and next week. Do you listen? Do you have a daily Depeche song? Is it intentional or just does it just happen? I want to know. For those of you that are already familiar with the podcast, and again, another short one this week, but there's not a lot going on, but I appreciate you checking it out. If you've listened to the show before and you've heard me talk about my science fiction books, but you haven't gone and purchased one yet, what are you waiting for? Go to Amazon.com. Grab yourself a science fiction book. You can actually read any of the books in the seven book series out of order if you want to. I kind of went out of my way to make sure that I set the stage for the stories in such a way that you can kind of fill in the gap so there's enough details to know what came prior so you can kind of pick up anywhere you want along the storytelling. As a matter of fact, I had somebody that reached out um, over the course of the past week or so that had only read book three in the series, uh, The Vanishing War. And I think I may go and send him uh, the first couple of books just because I appreciated the fact that he liked that book and hadn't read the other two. But there are seven books in all in the series. If you like science fiction, and you obviously love Depeche Mode, check out my science fiction series. It's set in the future, 2172. Air and space flight culture has been replaced by car culture. It is inspired in part by Depeche Mode. Uh, the underlying themes of the story, life in the so-called space age, the world we live in, life in general. I was influenced by Ready Player One in the pop culture aspect of what they included in that book. And while I didn't want to do sort of a one-to-one -one comparison, I did put in a story um, element where the music of the time of Depeche Mode, 80s through the 2000s, is nostalgic and popular among the characters of the story. So there's a lot of references to the music that I love, including a lot of Depeche Mode references, both direct and indirect. And the lead character himself is actually a massive Depeche Mode fan. You can go to Amazon.com or MyNerdWorld.net, search for John, J-O-N, Justice, and Embark for more details. This is the description of book one in the series. With interstellar travel possible, Taft Guardia spent his days honing his piloting skills, preparing one day to travel the galaxy. But when an, 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 but when an industrial accident inside a D-Corp civilian and military spacecraft factory sets off an apocalyptic chain of events, exploring the stars becomes a matter of survival. As the global evacuation begins, the ruthless Sin Argum of D-Corp threatens to destroy every vessel not loyal to his regime. Meanwhile, amid the chaos... Taft becomes unwittingly tied to the catastrophe when he recovers an advanced freighter and what may be the key to saving Earth's evacuees. On the run across the galaxy, Taft must unlock the secrets of what he's found if there's any hope of stopping D-Corp's evil leader before it's too late. Pick up and bark today. It's great for ages 11 plus, but it is written for adults. If you like your science fiction to be epic, filled with some romance, action, and amazing tech, Embark is perfect for you. Seven books in all in the series. Pick up Embark Book One today, available in ebook, 
hardcover, paperback, and audiobook, and free on Kindle Unlimited. Head on over to Amazon.com and search for John, J-O-N, Justice, and Embark. Thank you so much for checking out this week's episode. I hope to hear from you between now and next week, talkshownerd at gmail.com. And wherever you are, I hope you are happy, you are healthy, and you're safe. God bless, and I'll talk to you again real soon. Bye. Hello, this is Martin Gore.